Okay, so today we are going to be talking about how to find different numbers of combinations of things. And so if you'll see here, there's an advertisement that I saw on the corner bakery sign the other day, and it talked about how there are 100 different combos of different menu items that you can order that have 600 calories or less. So they're talking about they have, you know, maybe seven different types of sandwiches, eight different types of soups, four different types of salads, and you can combine those in a bunch of different ways to make a total of 100 different meal options that you have for under 600 calories. So these combinations, they're everywhere. We can find them in our everyday life. Um, another place that I think that really blows my mind is how many combinations of drinks that you can make at Sonic. There are 398,929 different fountain drink combinations you could make. So if you wanted to add cherry to a Coke or cherry to a Dr. Pepper, or maybe it's vanilla, or maybe you want to make it diet. There are all of these different options that you always have in order to um, have different selections. So we're going to look at today what are the different options that I have in my closet. If I wanted to get dressed this morning, how many different choices would I have to wear? So I'm going to go into my closet and see what I've got. So it looks like I've got the option to wear these pair of pants, this dress, or this skirt. I guess those are my three main options for today. So if I want to wear the pants, I've got two different pairs of shoes that I can choose to wear. So I can wear my pants with my running shoes or my pants with my heels. My running shoes look like someone might have stepped on them or something. And I'm going to move it over to make it more organized. So I've got the possibility of pants. I've got the possibility of wearing them with my heels. Or I've got the possibility of wearing them with my running shoes. And I can do this for all of these different outfits because I can choose to wear the pants, the dress, or the skirt with any of these different shoe options. You can decide which one I think looks the cutest. Now I'm organizing this into what we call a tree diagram. And it's called a tree diagram because it kind of starts out looking like the base of a tree trunk and it gets bigger as you go on up, kind of like a sideways tree. And all of these little branches have the details about what my possible combinations are. So right now, I've got two combinations with my pants, the heels and the tennis shoes, uh, two combinations with the dress, my heels and my tennis shoes, and two combinations with the skirt. So right now, I have two, four, six different combinations. But I've decided that I want to add in some jewelry. So I'm going to look at the jewelry. I've got a ring that could go with each one. So I could wear the pants, the high heels, and the ring. I could wear the ring with the pants the high heel, I'm sorry, the pants, the tennis shoes, um, and the ring. I could wear the ring with the dress and the heels, or the ring with the dress and the tennis shoes. And finally, I've got all of my skirt options. So skirt, heels, ring, skirt, tennis shoes, ring. Now I'm going to distribute the pin to each one of these outfits because I've got all of these different choices. So whatever I could wear with the ring, I could definitely also wear Excuse me, sorry, it cut me off. I don't know where it left me off. So I was uh, placing my pin down here um, underneath my ring so that I could make sure that wherever I could wear the pin or wherever I could wear the ring, I could also wear this pin. So I'm attaching all of these. So now I've got the option of the pants, the heels, and the ring, or the pants, the heels, and the pin, the pants, the tennis shoes, and the ring, the pants, the tennis shoes, and the pin, and so on and so forth all the way down this tree so that I have all of these different options. Now finally I'm going to bring the necklace. So I could, if I don't want to wear the ring or the pin, I can wear the necklace. So I'm going to distribute my necklace to all of these different outfits that I've created. Because my goal is to see how many different choices do I have. Maybe it's going to be a headache for me because I don't like having too many options because it makes me overwhelmed. So here are my different options now. So my running shoes gave me these options, my heels gave me these options, my dress and my heels gave me all these options. My dress with my running shoes gave me three more options. 
my skirt, my heels gave me these three options, and my skirt, my tennis shoes gave me these three options. So now I had three over here, three options over here because I could do pants, heels, ring, that's one, pants, heels, pin, that would be two, and pants, heels, necklace would be three. Then I could do pants, running shoes, ring, that would be my fourth, pants, running shoes, pin would be five, pants, running shoes, necklace would be six, so I had three plus three, which gave me a total of six. Then my dress, my heels, and my ring would be seven. My dress, my heels, and my pin would be eight. Dress, heels, necklace would be nine. So on and so forth. So now if I've organized my tree diagram well, all I have to do is come down here and number all of the final products that I've made. So these are all basically lists of the different outfits that I could possibly wear today. So once I finish tallying them all up, I see that I have 18 different outfits. Or I could have figured that out by saying there are three with the pants and heels, three with the pants and tennis shoes, three with the dress and heels, so on and so forth, until I did three times six and got 18 total combinations.